As many of you assume that 1 plus 2 equals 3, it is time to reconsider that. What's going on everybody? This is Jay and this is the unboxing of the 1 plus 2. Let's get at it. The OnePlus company has been very well known to be the flagship killer of many devices out there including the OnePlus One. Now we have to really reconsider if the OnePlus Two will be the flagship killer of 2016. In my opinion I think it's still missing some crucial I would say specifications in order to do so but that's why we have unboxings and reviews and also opinions. You guys have to let me know what you think about the OnePlus Two. The base model which is the 16 gigabyte model comes with a price of 329 and then we have the 64 gigabyte model which is a lot more recommended. It has a price point of 389 and the Chinese version comes with 3 gigabytes of RAM and the US version comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM. This was acquired with the help of iBaby888. Now I'm not sure if iBaby will sell this device as the current moment. He is considering it. Uh, he just decided to help me a little bit finding it because this phone is very difficult to acquire and if you do find it, let's say on eBay or other websites, the price is absolutely ridiculous. I did have to pay a price of $499 for this particular model plus the shipping so it came to about $525. So here let me just go ahead and jump directly into the box. We can see that this time the box is uh, fitting exactly to the phone, meaning that we don't have any extra space inside. We're going to be seeing that in just a moment. Unfortunately, I decided to uh, pre-unbox it before and just take a look uh, inside and see exactly how this phone looked like. And I have to say that the build quality is amazing. The phone does operate uh, quite nice. Now it is missing uh, some of the great specifications that we see on almost every device, which is NFC. And this is going to be going into a one-to-one -one battle maybe with the CTE Accent Pro. Uh, we know that the CTE Accent, yes, it is a little bit more in price, but you guys also get a lot more in my opinion. So like I said, here we have the box. On the front, we have the OnePlus logo. We have the OnePlus 2 model on the left-hand side of the box. On the side, it's going to be plain. Now the box does look and feel very nice and solid. It is not cheap. Now here from the back, I think you guys already saw that, but I'm just going to block the IMEI just for privacy purposes. Uh, here we can see the information. This is the 64 gigabyte model. Now this is the Chinese version, which means that maybe in the USA, we're not going to get the 4G LTE bands. I'm not sure yet, but I just decided that I wanted to actually hold and feel the device and see how well it's going to operate. Now, um, the seller of this particular model was able to install the oxygen operating system. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the Chinese version does come with a different one, but they were able to flash the one uh, that comes with the US model, which is the oxygen 2.0. It comes again 64 gigabytes, 3 gigabytes of RAM. This is the sandstone black, and I gotta say, guys, that it looks gorgeous. Now, here, let me just go ahead and pop open the box and see exactly what we have inside like I said guys I already did my own pre unboxing I just couldn't resist this phone is uh, very famous out there as we already know so here we're going to find the phone itself and here we can see that I got the sandstone black and the great news is that this phone on the back is a little bit rough but it's the best feeling that I have seen on a smartphone yet now something that I didn't like is the camera position. I think it's more towards the middle side and it makes your phone look a little bit weird. Um, I would prefer maybe if it was a little bit higher, uh, but that's only a preference and I think it comes only to my opinion. A lot of you might love it and a lot of you may have the same opinion as I do. So setting this aside, inside we're going to find the manuals and the manuals are very nice and well put in here. Now, unfortunately, guys, it's a little bit difficult to get them out, but we already know what manuals are, so we really don't have to recap it. As a matter of fact, we do have a little uh, envelope type of cover here. So this is all the manuals, and it says they're one plus, and they do come in Chinese because, again, this is the Chinese version. So I cannot read them anyways, and I don't read them at all. So there we have it for the manuals. Then inside we're going to find the USB cable. Now this time we have the USB Type-C. So that's something that I thought that the 
no 5 was going to carry and also the uh, Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus uh, that was a little bit disappointing and for that reason I may not purchase the no 5 I'm still uh, doubtful about it because it comes with the same processor as the one that I already have and to be honest with you guys I don't like big phones uh, such as you know 5.7 inches and above um, I will keep it at the most 5.5 inches that is my max and I think that the no 5 is a very elegant device but it's just another Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge uh, just maybe with a bigger screen and um, yeah like I said I might not purchase it I might I don't know so here we have the USB type C and the great news is that this is re reversible so you guys can place it any uh, position that you want to and that's a very very nice touch here by one plus so let me just go ahead and uh, set this aside and then also we're going to find the wall charger now I think that this is going to support fast charging I haven't tested it yet because I took just a quick look let me see if I can actually focus this for you guys I do apologize for not being uh, very clear but it says there are 5 volts 2 amps just right here I'm not sure if you guys can see that and yes it is a 2 amp charger so it is uh, actually very nice and it has a uh, unique design and is made by the company OnePlus as we know already so let me just go ahead and set all this aside real quick for you guys so that way we can go ahead and jump right into the hands-on of the device so it came with this uh, protector now the great news is that you don't have to break the protector in case you guys plan to resell this device later on in the future I usually recommend to keep boxes uh, boxes do increase the value of a phone believe it or not I know a lot of people that actually throw them away and I never recommend it because like I said guys keeping a box is very important when reselling a device now here we find the OnePlus on the front we're going to have a 5.5 inch display it is a LTPS and it comes with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 it comes with the Corning Gorilla Glass number 4 this time on the top you find a 5 megapixel sensor camera we also got the proximity and light sensor and also a notification LED light together with the ear speaker looking towards the bottom side of the phone even though we can't see it yet we will have this time a menu key and also a back key now this home button is going to serve us as a fingerprint scanner but keep in mind that this is not going to be a push button it's going to be only working with touch and it goes um, also back it serves as a back key and it's also serving as a home key so this phone is going to have multiple functions when it comes to the home key here on the left side we find this little toggle now this is only for notification uh, you guys can change it to where uh, you want to only hear the priority notifications such as contacts and much more and you can set it directly to the phone I'll be talking a little bit more about this later on but yes this is a toggle you can flip it upwards and you can do it downwards as you guys can tell Looking towards the upper side of the phone, we're going to find the 3.5mm headphone jack. We also have the secondary microphone. And if I forgot to mention, this phone does come with a beautiful metallic frame all the way around. And they made it a little bit thinner on the edges, giving you the feel and the illusion that this phone is actually very, very thin. Now one of my favorite parts about this design is the feel of the back of this phone. It's a sandstone and it comes with many other colors and we can remove it this time. And uh, the SIM card is going to be a dual SIM, dual standby and it's going to be located inside. I'll be going through that in just a moment. So here we find the dual LED flash. We got the camera and also I believe this is a sensor for laser focus if I'm not mistaken. The camera is able to record in 4K and it is a 13 megapixel sensor. Also, we got the OnePlus logo, and then looking towards the inside, we're going to find that the battery is not removable, and it comes with a 3,300 power milliamp LiPo battery this time. So here we can see the information, and again, I have blocked the IMEI. I do apologize for that, guys. I plan to keep this phone as well as the CTE Accent for quite a while. Uh, maybe it's my backup device. Now, I'm very unpredictable when it comes to phone. I might say I'm going to keep them, and then I end up selling them for something a little bit better. Who knows? So here's the build quality of the OnePlus 2. On the side is where we're going to fit the SIM cards, and it does support two SIM cards, like I mentioned earlier. And um, I have already inputted one of my SIM cards already which is the one for Cricut and I'm going to show you that right now so unfortunately with Cricut so far I haven't gotten 4G LTE but it is suspected this is the Chinese model but if you guys get the US model or if you get lucky to actually get an invitation for the US model you will get 4G LTE with AT&T and also T-Mobile 
And now that we saw the back side of the phone, we're going to go ahead and jump into the remaining of the metal frame. On the right side is where we're going to find the volume rocker as well as the power button. Now they are significantly separated, so it's a little bit easier to identify them. Um, I didn't have any issues whatsoever so far on my testing. On the bottom side, we're going to find again the USB Type-C connector and we also got the microphone together with the loudspeaker. And then on the left side, like I mentioned earlier, we're just going to have this little toggle uh, for the notification purposes. And then on the back, we already saw everything that we have. So um, now we're going to go ahead and power on this device. Again, it comes with the Oxygen 2.0 and it is powered by Android 5.1.1. It comes with 3 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and it has the Snapdragon 810, which is clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. It is octa-core, 64 bits. It has the Adreno 430, and again, the resolution of the screen is a uh, 4HD, which is uh, 1920 by 1080. And yes, it is IPS, so on viewing angles, the colors are going to look very nice and vibrant. Now, uh, in my opinion, I really think that we still don't need a uh, 2K screen in order to see it much better. I think the 1080p is great for battery consumption and so on. So uh, this oxygen operating system, guys, comes very clean out of the box. We don't have a lot of junk on here. It's just going to be the basic uh, Google applications that we need in order for it to operate well, as you guys can appreciate here. The only ones that we have that are not necessary is maybe the uh, Swift Key keyboard. Uh, I do prefer the standard keyboard that comes with Android, in my personal opinion, but everything else here is belonging to Google. So we don't have, you know, junk applications this time. Everything is nice and clean. Uh, jumping here into the settings app, you're going to see right on the bottom that right now I have changed the background to look black. I don't like the white background. So there we can appreciate the Android 5.1.1. And yes, it is the Lollipop. This is a real operating system. We really don't have to question that at all. Now on the bottom side, even though we can't see it, there we can see now the menu key. We also got the back key and you can also change it if you guys want to invert it. Whether you want the back key to be on the right side and the menu key to be on the left side. Because uh, we only have two lines when it comes to the soft touch keys. So they can be inverted to whatever you guys want it to, which is a very, very cool feature there. Um, also, we have other stuff on here that I saw, including the fingerprint scanner. We already know that. Uh, we're going to be testing uh, that very soon, so just stay tuned for that in just a few moments. And also, we got the gestures. Uh, this is the buttons, and this is what I was talking about, that we can change them. Uh, it says there's what buttons. So if I turn it off, then the menu key, I believe, is going to be on the right side, and the back key is going to be on the left side. But I prefer the other way around. Now let me jump back here and now we're going to go ahead and check the RAM available and this is why I was telling to you guys that uh, having very little applications right off the back is going to give you the ability to run more applications on the background so there we can see that right now we have 2.7 gigabytes available out of the three so that's amazing um, also on the internal storage we do have about 54 gigabytes of storage available out of the 64 so the system itself is taking about 10 gigabytes and that's quite a chunk. But still guys, 54 gigabytes I think is quite sufficient, at least for me, in my opinion. Now something that I was mentioning earlier about the home key here is that it is not a actual button. It's going to be something that works by touch. So if I just put my finger over it, it's going to take me here directly to the home menu, as you guys can tell right now. Um, also on top, we find all the uh, standard uh, quick toggles. We got the Bluetooth toggle, the Wi-Fi toggle. Uh, we have the uh, data connectivity and much more. Right now I am connected here with Cricket, but it is reading it as AT&T. Uh, next thing we're going to do here briefly before we end the video is go ahead and test the fingerprint scanner so that way you guys can see that it is working as intended. And the cool part about this fingerprint scanner is that you guys can use it even while the screen is asleep. So that's uh, very, very cool. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, click next. And now we're going to place my thumb on top. And this time the animation is a little bit different. You just have a little circle bar that lets you know how much has been completed so far. As well as on the bottom we have a percentage. So right now it's about half. And you can move your thumb around so that way if you guys don't place it perfectly, you still have a chance of it reading it. And I believe this is reversible. So there we go, we have recorded our thumb and it says all set, finish. And uh, let me just select OK and there we go, we have added a fingerprint. So what I want to know is 
from the get-go if I can just go ahead and unlock the device and yes I can guys well wow, that's a very very nice feature to have on here you can see that right now the device on sleep and if I put my fingerprint on top it takes me directly here to the phone itself I don't have to wait good uh, which is another great shortcut to have so there you can appreciate it that right now I am unlocking the device and it's super accurate I don't have any misreadings whatsoever and it's super super fast I would say it takes less than one second to complete so uh, next we have the camera here briefly I just want to show you the quality real quick right now I've been playing with it uh, I have it on full screen so when you guys put it on full screen it's going to decrease the megapixels to 8 megapixels out of the 13 uh, which is a little bit of an inconvenience then on the side here we're going to find some of the options that we have you have photo video panorama slow motion and time lapse so it's a very simple application to use. In this case, we're just going to do photo. And uh, if I go here into the uh, settings, let me actually see, I think I have to scroll to the side. We go into settings. You guys will see that I change the ratio to 4.3. I'm sorry, to 69 out of the 4.3. So if I do that, then the pixels will get affected. Right now I have it to where the factory recommends it, but then the photo is going to look more square and it's not going to be in full screen like I said before. So with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead for now and test it this way. So that way you guys can see the max quality. Let's go ahead and take a picture here of the box. Let me um, open it for you. I believe that in order to open it, we had to go here into um, this photos app by Google. So here we have that photo guys. And there we can appreciate the quality, the colors, everything appears to be very, very nice already. But we're going to be talking more about it on the actual review video. This is only a quick hands-on. Like always, if you guys do have any questions, please don't forget to comment down below. Please like the video, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on my next one.